last year, um, my, myself and six other colleagues won the L Elsevier Foundation and the Organization of Women in Developing World Award for our research into food security. Every single year, um, there is a selection process and a target topic. So 2023 was fo mainly focused on food security. So the, the award gives us a platform to share our research beyond our normal um, platforms to share research. And it has been a, an, an amazing experience for me and probably for the other recipients as well. Uh, my name is Renuka Attanayaka. I am from University of Kalania, uh, Department of Plant and Molecular Biology, Sri Lanka. My name is uh, Mukhtarul Sirundarj. I am with and the researcher at the Institute of Veterinary Medicine, Mongo University of Life Science in Mongolia. My name is Loko Yainulo Haistel. I'm Beninese. I'm a lecturer. Uh, I am a researcher at the National University for Science, Technology and Mathematics in the Republic of Benin. My name is Hanin Dweib from Bethlehem, Palestine. As I serve as a chairwoman of Clinical Nutrition and Dietetics Department at Palestine Ahli University in Bethlehem. Hey, my name is Carla Crespo. I'm from Bolivia. I work at Universidad Mayor de San Andres in La Paz, Bolivia. My name is Ejeni Kaitesi. I'm originally from Rwanda, but I currently work in South Africa at the University of Pretoria as an associate professor. My area of research is focused on exploring dietary and testing dietary interventions and its effectiveness on tackling adipocytia inflammation in early pre-diabetic stages to prevent cardiovascular diseases and diabetes uh, formation. When I talk about my research, uh, which is more clinical nutrition, people might think that it's irrelevant to food security, but actually it is in the core of food system and food security because like we're tackling the hidden malnutrition, hidden hunger, which is the uh, micronutrient and macronutrient deficiency related to malnutrition, which is like induced by overeating and overnutrition, not just like underweight and undernutrition. The main challenges that I face is that, first of all, research is not a priority, especially during this time, because like we have other priorities. Our priorities focus mainly on medical aids, on education, on like just living a day by day, no one would give me like $10,000 for research. And it's, it is insane and insensitive to ask for that during this time. The challenges to food security in Palestine right now is stability because economical, financial, uh, social, uh, political stability is all like a huge obstacle against having food security. And even if you have money right now, especially in Gaza, it's not enough to secure like good nutritious meals to your children. And this will affect the long-term uh, nutritional status in terms of macro and micronutrients. And it will affect generations of Palestinians in my country and maybe in the region as well to have a good quality of life and good health as well. The one uh, top challenge is like extreme price fluctuations in Sri Lanka. Sometimes of the year it's very high, sometimes of the years it's very low. And post poor post-harvest product uh, crop management system and poor disease diagnostic, rapid, we don't have rapid diagnostic techniques. Being a parent pathologist, uh, my research mainly focused on early diagnostic, early detection and diagnostics and uh, find the remedies or management practices. So similar to the COVID case, we know that we, we were able to tackle it early diagnostic, similar to the crop, crop diseases as well. We have to have a rapid disease diagnostic techniques and facilities available. Otherwise, what happens is uh, when the disease hits, by the time we use classical traditional techniques, the disease hits off and the crop is gone. So rapid, quick diagnostic techniques, especially with the state of the art te uh, technology, uh, has to be there. Top challenges in the food insecurity in Mongolia is uh, animal disease and uh, climate change. In 2009 and 2010, Mongolia lost 22% uh, of its total livestock, mm. so which immediately affected the meat price and 1.6% uh, uh, drop in gross domestic product. So my research focused on animal disease and zoonosis, especially tick-borne disease.
What motivates my research is um, desire to impact or contribute to food security in Africa, which is a big, big problem. And cereals and grains generally are staple foods in Africa, so it makes sense to me. And I also have had personal experiences with food insecurities. I grew up a child refugee, so I moved three different countries before I turned seven. And so as I grew up, I felt that I needed to do something that would add value in food security because it had been personal and had, had, had impact on me as a child and my entire family who were refugees for a very long time. When I decided to go to university and study, option one was become a doctor and, and heal people. But at, at that time, my, my home country was just out of a genocide and agricultural systems were a mess. Um, hunger was a real issue. I chose agriculture because it was the heart and the soul of the country. And as I dug deeper into the issues of Africa as a continent, I felt this really is at the forefront of what we deal with on a daily basis. So I feel like it is it, um, agricultural systems and food security particularly needs urgent attention. As a scientist, I feel that I can contribute because I, I know what it feels like to go back to, to go to bed without food. The recent projects that we've been um, involved in, uh, my team and colleagues, collaborators in the US and Jamaica was a Global Nutritious Composite Flour project. This project has shown that we can improve iron bioavailability, um, vitamin A and protein improvement, thus having an effect on protein energy malnutrition and hidden hunger which is a problem in sub-Saharan Africa. Among the top challenges for assuring food security are, of course, as in the whole world, the climate change <laughs> and the constraints that climate change brings. Uh, for example, uh, frosts, mm. diseases, and pests that are affecting uh, crop productivity. I'm biotechnologist and I'm researching on microbial solutions for agriculture and climate change. We study the microbial diversity that is an uncovered niche of uh, beneficial microorganisms. So we studied uh, from the focus of um, controllers of plant diseases and also uh, growth promoters, especially under the scenario of climate change. We focus on drought um, um, tolerance to, co to, to frost. My research is at the interface between genetics and entomology. Uh, it's focused on the development of alternative methods to protect crops. Uh, I explore the use of biological control, such as predator, entomopathogen, and also the genetic control uh, throughout the varietal resistance of crop. There are several constraints for crop production in my region, but for me, uh, the proliferation of insect, invasive insect pests is the most important because now, for example, we have the invasion of foramiworm, which come from America, and which cause enormous losses on mice production. And so now the problem is the, is the fact that the farmer don't have any solution to fight this pest and use a lot, a lot of chemical pesticide. Yes, my research uh, search a solution, eco-friendly solution to protect store, store food and crop field also. Uh, I actually uh, work on the use of agroecology uh, system to protect uh, crop and reduce infestation. I will propose that uh, uh, police makers develop a political strategy to uh, impact, really impact the small order farmer, and also develop uh, agricultural policy, including funding for research to resolve the local constraints. If I can meet the uh, decision maker or policy maker, yes, what they should do, 
my 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 opinion this should be a holistic approach you shouldn't tackle one thing at a time plant diseases uh, uh, breeding environmental whatever the, the the climate change we can't tackle everyone separate everything separately it should be a holistic approach the decision makers in food system should focus on provide the healthy safe and the sufficient food to citizens with citizens if i can talk to a policy maker i could tell him that subsidizing is not the only solution that there should be um, workshops there should be educative programs for these people that uh, produce to improve their production to improve their livelihoods we need like the science thinking the science oriented thinking the problem solving thinking rather than being just profit oriented we have to get away from the silo thinking a boxing perspective around um, reaching outcomes as food security and nutrition security and rather look at a combined collective effort, a systems approach, if you may. So I think my research is somewhere in the middle <laughs> of all this. But I think what this award did was put, um, shed some light on our work over the years we are early researchers, so we have a long way to go, but I think this is a motivation for us, but also for upcoming researchers that we mentor in different um, um, platforms to show that it is indeed a global effort for us to achieve these um, important goals. The world needs us as scientists or communities or whatever form or shape we come in. But every contribution is important and that is what this award does.